proceed and um, first up we'll take um, Quiet Sky Waiheke and we have Kim Whitaker with us and um, Kim, welcome um, and you're most welcome to bring um, any guests to the table. We've got a, three other chairs there, Kim, if they wish to come um, and Kim is uh, presenting a petition here today uh, on the control of helicopter traffic on Waiheke Island and um, above Waiheke Island. Welcome, Kim. We Thank you. Yes, five it's a uh, quiet sky and dark sky from Waiheke today, so you'll hear a lot about Waiheke skies. Um, <clears throat> Chairman and councillors, thank you for allowing me to present our petition on the control of non-essential helicopter traffic over Waiheke. In the few minutes I've available, I'll try to give you an insight into the helicopter situation facing the island, a brief details of our petition, and what we hope that you as a, as a planning committee can do to help solve this growing crisis. And I use the word very, very deliberately. It is a crisis. The impact of helicopters on the amenity value of hundreds of households on Waiheke has gone beyond the tipping point. In the last decade, dozens of helipads have been consented on the island with no consideration of the cumulative effect and the potential safety implications. You can see from the map what the situation is. We now have on Waiheke an unparalleled situation in New Zealand and possibly in the world. There are 48 consented helipads and more than 30 of them are at the western, more populated end of the island. Although these consents are all issued with conditions concerning maximum number of aircraft movements, flight paths, an arbitrary acoustic level, none of these conditions are monitored. I repeat that, none of them are officially monitored. And so they're routinely broken, both by the helicopter operators and by the consent holders. The permitted levels of helicopter movements for individual helipads and the clustering of the busy, busiest ones, particularly around some of our vineyards, effectively means there's no limit to the number of helicopters that could be using the same airspace and flight paths at the same time. We've worked out for just 12 of these helipads, if they received all of their permitted helicopter movements, there could be a total of 344 movements in a single day. Hence, I say it's an unparalleled situation in New Zealand. The consents are being given with no requirement to notify the properties close to the helipads and absolutely no consideration of the noise impact on the properties situated under the supposed flight paths. But since the helicopter operators pay scant regard to these designated flight paths, most properties at the western end of the island are constantly affected by helicopter noise. And this is particularly the case at weekends and in the summer months. What also shocks us, it appears there is no discussion between the planners and the CAA, the national organization responsible for helicopter safety in the, the uh, giving of these consents. Under CAA regulations, all non-emergency aircraft are supposed to fly at a minimum of 1,000 feet over towns and settlements. As the airspace over Waiheke is totally uncontrolled, these regulations are also being ignored. Helicopters coming in and out of these 48 helipads are not even required to operate transponders which would at least allow them to be their altitude and flight paths to be monitored. This level of non-essential helicopter traffic has grown exponentially over the last few years. The helicopter companies are aggressively marketing heli-tourism to the vineyards and other attractions on the islands. And as has been reported in the press, the private use of helicopters for transport in New Zealand has shot up, particularly since COVID. As our petition shows, the impact of this situation on people's lives is causing outrage. In just 12 days, we collected nearly 1,400 signatures. 750 of these were online, and unlike some petitions, these were all virtually all from people in New Zealand. But probably more significantly, we collected nearly 600 more in just a few hours on the streets of Waiheke.
So this is an issue that really affects people on the island very, very seriously. The petition we, we launched is addressed to both Auckland Council and the Ministry of Transport because there's a dual problem between the business of the consents for helipads and aviation control. Our demands of Auckland Council are somewhat blunt, namely to stop permitting more helipads and to impose additional conditions on existing helipads to reduce noise and, importantly, increase safety for residents. We recognise that the situation has grown over a number of years and has been the result of many factors uh, and planning rules that it won't be resolved in a simple way. But quite simply, the island cannot handle any more helipads. As some of you are aware, the planning committee has also received a notice of motion on helicopter consents from the Waiheke local board, which presents a more nuanced set of requests to address the problem. What this petition does is to demonstrate to you how strongly Waiheke residents feel about helicopters. And when this notice of motion comes before the committee, we hope you will recognise the urgency of the situation and the need to fully meet all of its requests. Auckland Council and the CAA must take urgent actions now so we don't have accidents in the future. We're not saying ban helicopters, we're merely saying correctly apply and enforce the existing rules and conditions to protect the immunity value of Waiheke Island and to ensure Tomoto Araroa is a safe and tranquil haven for both residents and visitors. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I think you're going to formally pass the petition over to us. Okay, formally so pass it we to will you. I shall sprint around there and do it. Staff will receive that on behalf of the committee. Thank you. Now, we'll take some questions here, members, just to give you a little background. I've met with um, uh, uh, Quiet Sky Wahiki. Um, um, I've also been in discussion with our um, planning staff on the regulatory side. Oh, no, sorry, on the, on the planning side. Um, and Councillor Coombe has also been in discussions with uh, both Quiet Sky Wahiki and our planning staff as well. Can I just ask, in your questions, can we avoid discussing a helipad application which is in process at the moment? And that is, uh, I won't even name it. Um, I think if you don't know it, then you won't be mentioning it. But there is a regulatory process for a, an application at the moment, um, and we will uh, not canvas that. OK, we'll canvas the the material that's been presented to us here today. Councillor Coombe, please. Tēnā koe, Mr Chair, Morena Koto and kia ora Kim. Thank you for your advocacy from the whole team of Quiet Sky Waiheke. Done considerable research and investigation and, and it's a very compelling case and I know that's assisted the Waiheke Local Board as well with their notice of motion. So thank you for that. Um, and for presenting the petition today. I just wondered if you could elaborate on um, Quiet Sky Waiheke has applied for a designation of the island as a special use airspace and mandatory transponder airspace with the Civil Aviation Authority and what significance that would have in conjunction with the actions that we need to follow up as a council? Yes. Um the second half of the petition, as I said, it's a petition to both the Auckland Council and to the Ministry of Transport, who are responsible for the CAA. The section that will the request to the Ministry of Transport is to ask the CAA to um, make the uh, Waiheke a special air space. Basically, what this means is that there are certain rules and regulations which apply. Um, areas such as airports and so on have these routinely. Um, what we're asking is not something extreme. The Helicopter Association has its own code of practice called the Fly Neighbourly Guidelines for helicopters, which asks them to do things like keep over water until, uh, for as long as possible before you go into the helipad, um, approach at a steep angle, fly at an altitude which minimises the noise level. Um, that 
when you're on the ground, turn off your rotors. They're very simple requests. They are requests which they, the Helicopter Association themselves advocate. So we're not asking for anything extreme. We're also asking for them to make it a, what is called a transponder mandatory zone. This means that the helicopters, all of which, well, they should all have them now, but by the end of this year, it will be compulsory, that it's just a mechanism whereby people on the sky with a very simple app can see what helicopter is flying, what altitude, and what flight path is it. It's the same app that if you make a complaint to the CAAA, they refer to to see where the helicopters are breaking their own regulations. What we're finding at the moment is that most of, or not most, but many of the helicopters, including some of the helicopter companies, turn off their transponder as they approach Waiheke. The question is why? I suggest it may be they don't want to have their routes and the altitudes they're flying regulated. Thank you. Appreciate your work. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Coombe. Councillor Dalton, please. Thank you, Chair Tanakwe. Thank you for your presentation. It was really, really interesting. That's a lot of helipads for a small island. Um, my question was just with regard to as uh, the it's, this could be minimal, but just any information around the impact of emissions, and I'm assuming that would be more at takeoff for the island. Is it something that is of concern, or is it unnotable? Because I mean, I'm, I'm not an engineer. I merely would apply common sense. These are one of the most fuel inefficient means of transport in the world. Um, we are facing, as this council and the government has said, a climate crisis, a climate crisis or even a climate crisis. And um, it, it strikes me as a total anomaly that these helicopters are being used for people to jump over to Waiheke for a glass of wine. It is a most crazy situation. Thank you for that. Member Henry, please. Um, uh, what's the uh, word from Mana Whenua? Have you interacted with Mana Whenua? What's their view? We've got, I mean, not directly. Um, we have had many people from the island. Uh, one of the things that's of significance is the Marae lies right beneath the, one of the flight paths to one of the main vineyards. So um, we haven't. Um, we have contacted as many people. We have not formally, but certainly that's some, you know, a, a group that we would certainly like to bring in and involve in it. Um, because as with the water, the air should also be uh, something that we consider. Uh, wildlife and um, so on are also areas that we think should be considered. Thank you. And finally, Councillor Simpson, please. I thank you for your presentation. That's really, really um, very, very interesting. So would you think that the amount of helipads on Waiheke are more for people um, to, to take advantage of economic um, <clears throat> situations on the island? In other words, they're coming over to spend money on the island, or are they coming over as private helipads for residential? What, um, what's the majority? The, the, if you look at the map, in terms of numbers, the majority are for private use, but in terms of usage and number of mo helicopter movements, the numbers going into the uh, vineyards are obviously that's where most of the flights are going. Uh, one of the issues, in fact, is that the benefit to tourism of these helicopters for Waiheke tourism is probably minimal. Um, and in fact, I would even argue counter to tourism. The number of people you meet who say their, their lunch at one of the well-known heli vineyards was ruined by the constant arrival of helicopters is innumerable. So in terms of it being a benefit to tourism, I would argue it's, a not, it's, a, it's the opposite. And in fact, it's the only people who are really benefiting from it are the helicopter companies. So if you were to minimise that helicopter use, obviously the, the, people, the reason it's happening is because people want to get in them and go where they want to go. So if you were to minimise that use, are you saying that we have capacity enough by way of ferries and then transport from the ferry to the 
vineyards or wherever else they're going to take up the slack if we were to reduce the helicopter use? Uh, I don't think that it's that the comparison of the number of people arriving by helicopter compared to the number of people arriving by ferry, there is absolutely no question that the, the ferries could take up that small increase in capacity. It's a very small number of people having a very, very large impact on the majority. Thank you. And finally, Councillor Hills, I need to call the questions yeah, after thank Councillor you. Hills close. Thank you so much. It's not so much a question uh, for you, Kim, and thank you so much for the presentation. I guess for you, Chair, or maybe Megan, uh, what would it take, and I, I know we can't put a resolution up here, but just to investigate a moratorium or a sinking lid or a stoppage to helipads? I, know, I don't know if that's in our immediate control or it should be, but I just would like to get some advice on if we are seeing a proliferation... Yes. Yeah. So look, just I think to, that's what yeah. the motion does. It's not for us. To, we can't interrogate that right here no, I know, right but now. I guess. Uh, yeah, and I don't think the staff are in a position really to to suggest you know the pros and cons of a moratorium or anything like that. We need to follow the direction that's on the screen there, and <laughs> and do the work, um, because the the staff are not prepared to respond. In fact, um, we'd have to have probably different staff, not. Um, not, not suggesting that the Chief of Strategy can't respond to the questions, but I think they are answered in the work. Councillor Coon, would you like to move accordingly? <coughs> move, Senor Hirohi. Uh, do I have a second, please? Second, Councillor Mulholland. OK, we have the motion on the board there, and members um, will refer this petition to staff uh, for their consideration and their response. It's probably going to go to a couple of different departments. <coughs> planning and regulatory, at least. Um, uh, so we will take it from there. It's moved and seconded. All those in favour say aye. 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 And uh, contrary no. Declare that carried. Thank you, Kim. And thank you, thank you to your team. Uh, Kwaitskai Waheke.